So it kind of behooves me to say a couple of things on my way out the door. Um, and it's funny, you know, when I mentioned how impressed I was by the showing in this room, given that everybody's on holidays, I'm one of those who are on holidays. And uh, to show you where, how much on holidays I was, I was watching Shameless today. I don't know if you're familiar, it's a wonderful TV show. Uh, but it was a very interesting and I think climactic episode where the young lady is going to court to get essentially guardianship over her siblings because her parents are just not good parents. And what really struck me was something that's been a real theme in my life, all through my life, and that is that for her, she had one thing that was the central purpose in her life, and that was to keep her family together. And I know it was comedic and had lots of swearing in it, but it really kind of reminded me why I got into PR in the first in the first place, and that is, it gives me a sense of purpose every day when I get up in the morning. So I want to take you back in time really quickly. 1982, my mother passed away from cancer. I was, you know, young, 21, getting ready to go off and getting a teaching degree because I couldn't think of anything else to do with a degree in English. And then the university intervened, and I met Connie Wilson, who was starting a public relations program. Public relations, not even quite sure what that meant, but it intrigued me. But the other thing that happened was I met a soulmate. I met a person who was lit up by a sense of purpose and passion. That public relations was going to be the way we were going to make the world a better place. And I got the bug and I never looked back. So for me, that kind of planted a seed of a purpose-driven life. Um, and really, PR kind of became that one thing for me. It was the one way through which I was going to be a force for good in the world. So to move forward a little bit, you know, my relationship with CPRS started back then. Um, they were really instrumental in giving us support when we were getting started in the program. Um, I sat on the advisory committee with members of CPRS, Otto Gatlin, over the years, and a really strong bond was formed with an organization of PRDs. So um, my allegiance to CPRS goes back that far. Um, and for me, I joined CPRS because I, I always talk about being tired of going to work in disguise. Um, I've never had public relations in my title except for a brief stint at Hill and Knowlton, which was a public relations firm. So of course, they actually took out a Globe and Mail ad when I got my APR. <laughs> but other than that, public relations was the word that would not speak its name. Um, so that's why I joined CRS, because I wanted to do something to change the conversation about, about the, the honor of the public relations profession. And by the same token, you know, as I got deeper into my career and my relationship with CPRS carried on, um, 2008, another event happened in my life that was another life-changing and, you know, purpose-driven one-thing moment, and that was when my best friend committed suicide. And for me, then, uh, once again, I was pulled back to this, this state of mind that said, um, I'm a PR, our job is to make a difference in the world, and this is the conversation we need to change around mental health. And so I jumped on that bandwagon in 2008. It, um, it really informed uh, some of the work that I did with the CPRS Auto Gathering team. Obviously, it was a big part of the conference that we organized in 2013. And again, it's become kind of a symbol for me of why I'm in PR. It's to make those important contributions to making our society a happier and more, uh, a more productive place for people to be. So um, lately, though, the one thing that has really been been uh, percolating in my mind is, what is my one thing now? I'm not, I'm not suggesting for a moment that the mental health battle is over. It isn't. But I think we've turned a significant corner. People are talking about it. It's becoming part of public policy um, around workplace health and safety. It's okay now to have a conversation about how you're feeling mentally. So I've been kind of thinking for the last few months, what's my next big thing? And then the truth is that reconciliation report came out. And I thought to myself, there's a conversation that is worth working on. Conversation amongst Canadians about what it means to be Canadian. And at the same time, I started to think about where am I going next? And I've always wanted to live in British Columbia. So I'm now telling the universe and everybody in this room, my intention is to go out, um, having now worked on talking about PR, I'm gonna go back to doing some PR. Um, and I want to dive into the truth and reconciliation um, work that is ahead of us as a community. I have no idea what that's going to look like, but I can't wait to come back here and share my stories with you in the years to come. So, um, so I just want to sort of share that little personal anecdote for 
with you for my personal journey through PR. I really feel storytelling is kind of my path. It's what I, it's what I bring to the table and what I'm hoping to bring to this conversation. Um, and as I leave CPRS, I mean, obviously I'm not leaving it, I'm leaving the board, but I, I will be a member forever. Um, and I would just want to remind you about CPRS's purpose. CPRS is one thing. Um, and that it's, you know, it's to celebrate and showcase this amazing calling that we've all responded to, to be forces for good in our communities. So, um, so if I, you know, I want to thank the people who've made it possible for us to do the work we've done, not just over the last two years with me, but for the last decades here in one of the, one of the more dynamic, I think, uh, societies across the country. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I have to start by saying thank you to Claudine Wilson, my first mentor and very dear friend, who's been an inspiration for me for a long time. I won't say that anymore. A very long time. Um, and there's a number of others in the room. Margaret Piercy, um, I have been, you know, you've been at my side um, at the uh, Rockland College at uh, the advisory committee table for 30 years now. Um, you've always been a shining beacon for me in terms of what it is to be a PR pro, purette, my very godmother, I always call her <laughs> I mean, I'm just surrounded by these lovely people in the room, JP. Um, you've all been inspirations to me. I'd be saying this to Jean if you were here, and to Fraser, but they, they've already started their vacations. Um, but I also want to say thank you to Kayla. Kayla Zabel was our student award winner last year. She came on board as one of the most fantastic and energetic volunteers I've ever encountered. Uh, I've, she's met her match in Stephanie, but, um, but <laughs> sorry, Stephanie is over there. Another blonde, I took my glasses off, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but when I meet people like Kayla and Stephanie um, and Jerushka and all of these, these wonderful, inspiring young people, um, it, it just it keep, it keeps me getting up in the morning. It gives me faith that our profession is in exquisitely good hands, and you guys are only just going to keep lifting that bar higher and higher. I want to thank also people like uh, Thorley Fallas, um, who've been with us for many years, very quietly behind the scenes, doing things like um, paying for domain registration and making sure the back end of our website is being maintained by this very sort of behind the scenes and quiet and visible support. Joe Farley's always been there for us when we need a moderator or a panel or anything like that. Accurate Design also not in the room, but did amazing work on the student program branding, and anytime we ask them, they always say yes. They've been working on our website. So to me, these are all emblems of um, how we draw to us these wonderful people who share our vision for um, it, you know, enlivening and enriching a community of communicators who are doing great things. So I want to thank all those people. Um, Finn, who's another one of those quiet supporters. Finn, thank you so much. Um, another unsung hero. Um, and Victoria Pecunier over in Ireland. I miss you, honey. <laughs> she was my right hand during the national conference, and then she went to chase her dream in Ireland. So, um, but she's missed, but certainly not forgotten. So, um, I'll just leave you with this message: Remember that we're here to motivate and inspire the next generation of public relations practitioners to be forces for good in the world. That is our purpose, and never lose sight of that. So, good luck. I'm looking forward to bringing in the new board. Woo